Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Um, wanted to give you guys an update here on this mono red aggro deck that I built the other day that has just been doing really, really well. Um, first of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. Um, I do also want to let you know that the deck list is going to be in the description, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com, and there will also be a link to the playlist with all of my videos there in the description as well. Um, I do also want to give a big shout out to my members. Thank you guys so much. Without you, it really would make this job a lot harder, and so I really appreciate you. Uh, Kibo and Herney the Horned, thank you so much for recently joining. Um, if you guys do want to become a member of of my channel and help support me and get early access to my content, um, there's a very easy way to do so and here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button. Uh, here right on the uh, also right under the banner here for the video so these are both great ways to support the channel I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you so thank you guys so much again for your consideration all right let's get into some games okay so let's go ahead and talk about the deck um, I made a video about this deck the other day and it was doing really well initially ended up going like 80% win rate four and one um, since then, I've run up a couple more games, and we're going to get into some more games here in a minute, but um, everything is working really well. Um, let me just go ahead and pull up the current win rate. It's currently at 78% win rate, 18 wins and 5 losses, and so it is just doing really well. We're currently now in the high uh, top 300 mythic, so it's climbing steadily, and really excited to just get some more games under the belt show you kind of how the deck is, is performing. Um, I can't say en enough good things about Invasion of Tarkir. And Stingerback Terror has just been a really, really nice card for this deck. It's sort of like a nice um, top end that just kind of closes the game out. You can play it for three mana and then, um, or plot it for three mana and then play it the next turn. It's usually anywhere between a 5-5 five, five and 7-7 seven, seven Flying Trample. And it also helps feed Invasion of Tarkir to do more damage. So only good things to say about it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and hop in. If you want to, I guess, look at the previous video in the playlist, check the description. It'll kind of go into a little bit more detail, sort of what the deck's looking to do. But it's a pretty straightforward deck. And let's jump in. And I think that this deck definitely has what it takes to climb into the top 250 Mythic. So if you're looking to make that climb, I think this is the deck for you. Okay, opening hand looks great. And I really have liked starting out with like Demonic Ruckus on one. I think in specific hands, like in this hand here, I'm going to go Swift Spear first because I know I'll be playing Invasion of Tarkir on two. So that does kind of change sort of what you're going to do on the first turn. Um, you do want to give it a little bit of thought. If you have Invasion in hand and like Swift Spear and Kumano faces Kakazan, there I'd probably play the, the Swift Spear first turn instead of the Invasion of, or instead of the uh, Kumano faces Kakazan, because you know you'll be going into Invasion on turn two. And against most decks that aren't st uh, strictly controlling, you really want to go ahead and flip your Invasion. So like here against the Rakdos, probably like the pump deck. We definitely want to go for invasion here and try to flip it. And just having four more dragons to be able to, um, to show with our invasion, just giving it that extra damage has just been a huge game. And so now we can actually invasion our invasion and then 
um, use play with fire to flip this at instant speed and potentially block or just set up um, stuff for next turn. So I think we definitely want to go ahead and do that. We could also plot the stinger back terror, but I think I like this play a little bit more. Here, even though we could ambush their slick shot show off, I don't think we want to. I think we want to go ahead and see what they do, and then we can kill it next turn when we attack in with our um, with our Thunder Maw. So I'm just going to go ahead and let them attack through, since they could easily have Play With Fire or um, you know possibly Monstrous Rage, something like that, and we'll be totally okay with it. And that was a really nice pickup because now we can go ahead and lightning strike this show off and then use the extra damage to get ourselves another dragon, which I think we would rather do. We could also just kill the show off right now, but there's a chance, that, again, if they have the... Um, monstrous rage they could play around it so i'd prefer to just try to flip our next dragon and then set up for a really big turn after that and here instead of plotting um, we're definitely going to go ahead and, uh, or, or, instead of plotting that Stinger back Terror, we're definitely going to plot Ruckus and then hold up Lightning Strike um, just to prevent ourselves from taking too much damage from their Slick Shot show off. But we'll definitely let them potentially pump and play into it. So I think play here is let's go ahead and block since we know we're going to be lightning striking their guy and just wait and s wait for the pump. Okay, so they did have the Dreadmaw's Ire, so now we're at least going to be trading here. Um, we are taking a ton of damage, though. The Dreadmaw's Ire, I was not expecting. If they have another pump, that could just be it. Yeah, I guess since Dreadmaw's Ire only works as an attacker, maybe we should have just used it sort of beginning a combat before they could pump it there. So that is unfortunate. I guess we could have played around it knowing about Dreadmaw's Ire. Um, haven't seen that in too many lists, but that is a potential blowout, I suppose.
Reaper's a nice hand. I'm happy to play out the Kumano faces Kakazan, even if we don't have a creature on two. Just getting this going feels pretty good. And then we can start emptying our hand here in preparation of Stingerback Terror. Um, I think since we're going to be doing four damage with Invasion, I think we just want to go face. And then just depending what we draw here, um, we're probably just going to be plotting one of these Stinger Back Terrors. I guess this potentially changes things a little bit. We could go Swift Spear into Play With Fire um, to flip the Invasion. The only potential problem here is if they have like cut down, which they easily could have, that could really sort of muck up our plans. So I think the play here instead, um, I'm just going to go ahead and push two points into invasion and then set up a stinger back terror. Yeah, and there's the cut down. Looks like, it looks like they've got it or something. All right, so now we can flip invasion and have a couple dragons back. And I think we probably want to use play with fire to get one of their skeletons here. just so we don't die to board. And now we have lethal on the swing back unless they keep both of their blockers back on the ground. Actually, I suppose we can, depending on what we draw here, it could just be lethal in the air. If we can get this up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, well that guarantees lethal in the air. That works. And they're tapped out meaningfully, so yeah, that'll do it. Oh, god, I forgot to play the creature before. Ugh. Oh, that was a mistake. I should have played the code breaker, then it would be lethal in the air. Okay, so I guess in this case they've got to block both here for it to not be lethal.
Otherwise, we just sit back and block, do it over two turns. Yeah, this is this is worse, but. That was definitely a mistake. Um, I think we should still have it though. Don't think they can fight their way th through three of our guys. It's definitely gonna be close though. They could have outs here. So yeah, we go to one. Whew, okay, almost through that game, but yeah. Stingerback Terror though, feels really good. Unfortunately, no one drop in this hand, but yeah, super happy to keep with two land. And we have a four point um, invasion to set up here, but I think against blue white, we kind of just want to get something going. So if we can sneak through a creature here, it's probably a little bit better. Eh, it's, I mean, it's close. I think that we do want the recurring damage. Let's go for probably show off. It, you know, it'll get the trigger off of the spell we play next turn. Codebreaker might be a little bit more consistent, but if we end up needing to refill hand, this could potentially be better later. So I think I'm just going to go for the, uh, the show off here. I guess they could march it here if they've got march. And then I think we just want to ignore these 1-1s one and just use uh, Invasion to go face. I don't think... Against blue-white control, usually you don't want to try to flip your Invasion because they have so much removal and you know it's just time that you could be going at face. So since we have a couple dragons, yeah, I mean, if we, could, if we can flip it easily... Like end of turn, it could potentially be powerful. And it is something we can do here. So I am a little tempted to do it. Because like if we can like lightning strike the invasion end of turn and then get a nice big swing in, it, it will be worth it. So I've been kind of a little bit divided on how exactly I want to play invasion, whether to try to flip it or not. And I think part of the downside is that it does die to temporary lockdown, so doing work on it feels kind of bad. So like the safest bet is probably to just not try to flip it and just go face. But like there probably are like corner situations and situations and cases where it's better to try to flip it and get the extra damage. Like, especially if you have like Devastator or things like that.
Yeah, and again here, I'm somewhat unsure. I think we just go face just to pl kind of play it safe. Since they have so many ways of, like if we can't flip this in one turn easily, you just sort of running it, you just kind of end up running into more trouble than it's worth. Basically, you just want to accept it as like a three or four point damage to face and just kind of go on with your day. Now, I think we'll just run out Codebreaker since we've got a pretty full hand. And they probably have some kind of removal here. Um, we are kind of giving them a two for one if we get our Codebreaker out, but I think it's still worth it. Because they probably are holding removal here for this slick shot show off. And this is arguable. It's like, you know, there's a decent argument here to, instead of playing like a second creature, not investing so much in the board since they're just going to lock down. I mean, this definitely incentivizes them to lock down. So I think that like trying to flip invasion was, was I'm glad we didn't. But it does leave us kind of without a whole lot of plays right now, which is sort of awful. So maybe it would have been better to try to just like push like lightning strike um, or something last turn instead of probably lightning strike because if we open ourselves up to like getting blown up by playing rage that's probably not great and i think this is this is like okay because we did have more creatures in hand but might have been better playing lightning strike there instead of trying to go for the the code breaker I think here we just set up Stinger Back Terror. Just to help kind of play around counter spells. And now they pretty much always have to be holding up three mana for the counter on Stinger back. So here, I don't think it's really safe to open the door for Monstrous Rage, but we can maybe start using some of our burn. Okay, so now we can burn in response and get some damage in. Okay, that was a really nice pickup. We'll start with the play with fire, see if they want to counter that. Okay, now that they've marched, we can safely get Monstrous Rage going. So this is a perfect open opportunity for us. Probably want show off on top. It's 
So now we can stinger back. The problem is, is it's, if they have a board wipe here, they're highly incentivized to have it. So I think we might still want to hold back stinger back. The only other problem is, you know, now they, we, we kind of have to present enough of a threat to get them to board wipe. So I guess like if we play stinger back and they, and they do sunfall, then like the turn after that, we can go slick shot, get them down to three, but maybe we just do slingshot or slick shot next turn and try to get them to sort of have something. So I'm, I'm really, I don't think we actually push stinger back just yet. Maybe we should have pushed it for it there. It's just, I feel like they've got a board wipe in hand. And since they know that we like kept our card on top, they're probably thinking they've got a board wipe or something, or at least get rid of our Devastator. Okay, so now we can finish off Emperor. We are at seven though, so we have to be a little careful. And again, like I don't love playing Stinger back here, but we're starting to drop low enough that I think we kind of almost have to because this flanker will definitely kill us if we don't yeah, this is tough. I, I feel like we have to stinger back here. Like, if they have another lockdown, we could just lose. Like, I certainly don't, don't like the fact that they're up you know, four or five cards here on us. I think it kind of all goes back to the play earlier in the game. I think playing the code breaker was probably not the right move. And holding that a little bit longer would have been better. So like the turn we played code breaker instead to use like lightning strike probably would have been a better move. And just try to force them to try to like one for one us instead of getting a two for one. We do still have top decks here that could win us the game if they can only deal with Stinger back, but. Okay, that's definitely good. It's not quite enough, but we can at least pressure them here and they can't kill us in one turn unless they've got nonsense. So we're still going to need to draw off the top here to, to take this unless they've got more action. Looks like they've got something.
Oof. <laughs> and we bricked. Oh, well. Um, well. Probably just dead at this point now. Yeah, that's going to do it. Close game. So yeah, I think that that earlier play, I would have been interested to see how the game would have turned out if we had gone for the lightning strike over the code breaker play earlier on. Yeah, because I think like when I was doing that standard event playing the Azorius control deck, um, I ran into a mono red deck that would just put out like one threat a turn and it was really interesting to see it from the other side and it was pretty maddening as the control player to having to deal with that and being forced to one for one. So maybe that's the way. Ooh, Thalia on turn two is kind of rough, I will admit. Now the nice thing is we have Devastator and Stingerback Terror, so even though they'll be able to pump Initiate here, we can still Invasion um, on the following turn to kind of cut through their defenses. I guess now, yeah. That was kind of interesting, them not attacking there. So I guess if we invasion, we've got invasion, copper coat, or Skrelv. And I, I, I think the copper coat is certainly the most dangerous card on the board right now. So let's probably start there. We could also get the scrub, but we'll have to go through that anyways. And there's no reason to, to show these that we've got these yet, so we'll just submit zero and then kill the copper coat. So now I think I kind of like Devastator for two to get uh, the invasion going, and then we can flip it with Lightning Strike the following turn if need be, if they have like another Brutal Cathar. We could also Code Breaker here, but it's just not quite as mana efficient. And we want Shiv and Devastator to be down anyways. We are gonna take a fair amount of damage here though. But yeah, these games against Mono White is all about getting this invasion flipped.
Okay, so now we could... I guess we can Codebreaker plus Kumano. The problem there is that if they have resolute reinforcements, which there's a decent chance that they do, then they can block our Codebreaker. Um, I guess we'll have Trample. Actually, I, I, never mind. We won't have Trample because we're we don't have enough mana for Demonic Ruckus here. So I think the play here is we. Maybe just lightning strike, and then problem is they can push through with Skrelv. Okay, I think we, let's plot the Demonic Ruckus, and then I think we hold with the Devastator in case we need to block, since we're so getting so low on life, and then just sit. Okay, they have Commando. We'll probably need Devastator to block Commando, depending on what else they attack with. So if they have like Iganjo here, it's really rough. And they can choose Skrelv now to force through probably their, mo their Moonrage Brute to give it Hexproof from red, which is annoying, but I think is not the end of the world. And then I think if we block here... We can take eight, go to one, and then use both of our dragons next turn to, I guess, like take out the Skrelv and the Thalia, and then use, like, our, then have our T Stinger back tear back to block. I suppose they'll have two creatures, so it doesn't quite work. Maybe we just need to block Commando here. I think we might have to block Commando. This way we take five, go to four. We can still kill Thalia this way or Skrelv. Yeah, I think this is probably right. We probably just need to soak the damage here. Again, if they have Iganjo, it's just super rough. Peace. Okay, well that's perfect. Definitely needed them to have like a do nothing card, so that's awesome. Now we need to kill Skrelv so they can't get through unblockably. Um, so we attack in, we kill Skrelv. We don't want their Moonrage Brute to flip. We can play the Stinger Back Terror. To just block whichever creature they want to get in with. <sighs> yeah, it's not perfect, but I think it's the best bet we've got.
Then hopefully they don't have two creatures or two spells. I mean, there's so many things they could have here. Okay, so they're just playing Thalia to get the double spell. That makes sense. Okay, that was a bit interesting. Um... I guess now we just try to kill the Moonrage Brute. Actually, never mind. We can't target it because it's got Ward. <sighs> so if we Demonic Ruckus and play with fire, our hand size will drop. So it'll be a 5-5, five, 5-6. Five, five, eight. <laughs> 16, yeah, that should do it. I guess they could have Iganjo here. If they've got Iganjo, it's trouble. So I think the play here is we put Ruckus on the Thunder Maw so that we're playing around the Iganjo. And then we play with Fire to get this up to a 5-5 five, five on face. And we can play the Kumano, just to get even larger. And then swing and just double trigger go face. And that'll do it. Nice. Close game. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let's take a quick look at the updated stats. So looks like, yeah, we're at 74% uh, win right now, 20 wins, seven losses. Um, really happy with the deck. I highly recommend you guys try it out and um, give it a go. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one here. But I think this is definitely capable of reaching top 250 Mythic.